Stephen Gilbo has done it again. He's taking lavish trips, yet telling us to snowshoe to work. Welcome back to Moose on the Loose. My name's David. Today, this is outrageous stuff. It is so outrageous. I'm up very late making this. It'll be nice and early morning for you guys watching this. But when there's news, there's news. Today, Stephen Gilbo, it was found out that he uh, took a junket. He took a lot of people, 633 people to Dubai and spent a lot of our money. A lot. Piles of it. But before we get to that, let's set up what's going on here. So first off, we've got a clip here. This is from a committee meeting where Andrew Scheer is uh, interviewing the parliamentary budget officer, the person who comes up with the exact or relatively good numbers regarding the carbon tax and how much it actually costs. This is the person's, this is their job in the government. Somehow the Trudeau and his cronies just sweep this under the rug. So Andrew Scheer asked him some questions about it. After that, we'll jump into a clip here. We've got of Stephen Gilbo acting like a complete bonehead. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I was hoping that we could have a discussion about the looming carbon tax hike that the Prime Minister is planning for April 1st. Uh, you did a comprehensive study of the carbon tax and uh, uh, but you not only looked at the direct costs uh, you, you looked at the total cost the on page three of the report it says uh, household net cost of the federal fuel charge fiscal and economic impacts I'm sure there's lots of Canadians that are following this very closely because they know how high prices are and they're afraid of how high they're going to jump April 1st but can you just explain what that means fiscal and economic impacts so the fiscal impact is the impact of paying the tax directly, for example, filling up the gas tank, uh, gas to heat the home, the indirect costs. So for example, if you buy a service or goods, there's an energy component embedded, plus the GST that's applied to that tax. So that's the fiscal cost. The government sends a check or a rebate. So the fiscal impact is the difference between what you pay, indirect and direct, minus the rebate. And on that front, 80% we estimate 80% of households get more than what they pay. When we also include the economic impacts, that's taking into account the fact that some sectors will be negatively affected by the carbon tax. For example, the transportation sector, the oil and gas sector is an obvious example. They'll be presumably negatively affected by a carbon tax that progressively increases. So when we take also that into account, we find that households will have lower employment in some sectors, lower investment income, and we find that it's the opposite. Once you take into account the fiscal and economic impact, the changes in the economic fabric of the country, that uh, households are seeing a negative impact uh, from the carbon tax when including both the amounts that they pay, but also the economic, the economic impact on households. In other words, the fiscal impacts are where the tax is applied directly. So when I see that on my fuel bill, when I fill up my car, if I see that on my heating bill, that's the, the, the direct cost. And the rebate was only built around capturing that cost. But what you're saying today is that all the other cascading effects of the carbon tax increase will have a cost to Canadians. Yes, there's an adjustment in the economy that's expected to take place by reducing our use of fossil fuels and that will have impacts certainly in the short term while the economy adjusts and that impacts increases costs for example of transportation companies which presumably will have lower profits that they will redistribute less of to shareholders for example and and higher costs that get passed on to consumers so, so that's a factor, too, in the economic cost, too. It's the indirect kind of cascading effects as a trucker has to pay his share of the carbon tax. That, that has to be accounted for somewhere. So with either higher prices, as you say, either lower wages or, or lower uh, uh, profits back to shareholders. Okay. And with that in mind, the majority of Canadians, are, are, are the majority of Canadians better off or worse off even after you factor in the, the rebate? Well, once you factor in the rebate, but also the economic impacts, based on our modeling, the majority of households will see a, a negative impact as there a result of the carbon. There it is. The majority of households will see a negative amount right from the parliamentary budget officer. It's straight from the horse's mouth. Trudeau is not going to appreciate his honest answers. <laughs> 
I'm curious if CBC will have him on tonight to share his report. <laughs> oh, jeez. I got this graphic here that I found. It is excellent. So the cost to consumer of carbon tax is compounded and cumulative. So you got pays carbon tax A, raw materials. Carbon tax A, GST on carbon tax A times 1.10. And then that goes over carbon tax B, logistics. So that's the main thing we're just going to look here at these blue boxes. Logistics, manufacturing, distribution center, transport, consumer. And you're just adding on every, every time. Carbon tax B, B on GST, plus A, or C, C, A, B, D, D, A, B, C, E, A, B, C, D. This is what the liberals focus on and forget the rest. That's basically it. So if we only had the carbon tax situation based on this, then the 80% rule, I guess, I still don't buy it because it doesn't, they don't even factor in the, the mortgage costs. So I don't buy it, but either way, it doesn't matter. The liberals don't count all of this. We've got an example here. If the raw materials cost $100,000 and each intermediate pays $5,000 carbon tax, the total to cost to the consumer is $89,513 higher, of which $67,230 is carbon tax and the GST on the carbon tax. That's a lot of... <laughs> It's a lot of carbon tax. Thank God though, when we pay this, there's just trees sprouting up everywhere and the birds are singing and, and God's just like, thank goodness, just keep sending those paper airplanes full of money up to me guys and I'll take care of the rest. What a bunch of nonsense. Next up, we've got Stephen Gilbo in his den of thieves asked about this. It's just a bunch of nonsense. The video says that the um, carbon price is a net loss for uh, most Canadian households when you go beyond just what they pay in the fuel charge and what they get back in the rebates when you factor in the whole economic picture. Is the PBO wrong in that assessment? Well, I, I think the PBO was the first one to, to admit in his report that he did not factor in the impacts of climate change. So it's not the full picture. It's a partial picture. And as we know, the cost of climate change have basically, and Arjit could, could talk about that. Like we've, we've gone from average cost per year in Canada, about a little over a decade ago of $200 million per year to average cost of $2 billion per year. It will go up because of the forest fires, the floodings that, that we've had last year. So <laughs> Canadians are paying for that. And, and Pierre Polyev will never talk about that. He, in fact, he can't, I haven't heard him say the words climate change before. Well, Monsieur Guilbeault, um, uh, your predecessor, Catherine McKenna, has said that your government has not explained this policy. Canadians don't understand it, basically. So you're talking about no shrimp in the St. Lawrence, and you're talking about all the forest fires and everything. Do you think they understand the link between carbon pricing and the impact on the environment? Have, has that been explained? Can you explain it? How does carbon pricing mitigate the impact on the environment? Well, as my department presented uh, in uh, just before Christmas, carbon pricing will account for about a third of our emission reduction by, by 2030. And unfortunately, when it comes to climate change, there's no on off switch. It's going to take a long time before we can we can tackle this issue, just like it. It's taking a long time. For example, we were taught I, I had the, the, the privilege and honor to go and pay my respect to Prime Minister Mulroney this morning. Um, he was responsible for the 1987 Montreal Protocol on ozone depletion. We know now that the ozone layer will have recovered from decades of human abuse, probably by, by, by 2060, more or less. So 1987 to 2060, that's the, type, that's the kind of time frame we're, we're looking at to tackle an issue like climate change, maybe even longer. But we need to act now. The more we wait, the more we will suffer the impacts of climate change. The more Canadians will be impacted by, by heat domes, by forest fires, by floodings, by, by coastal erosions, by, by sea level rise. And, and, and carbon pricing will provide about 30% of our emission reduction by 2030. So if there's someone somewhere that can show me a measure that comes at no cost to, to, to Canadian taxpayers because it's revenue neutral, that can give us a third of our emission reduction, I'd, I'd like to hear it because I've been working on this for 30 years. That's all I've done as an adult, working on climate change. And there's no such measures. There is actually one. It's called, uh, <laughs> say anyone who's a liberal or a liberal supporter will just move you out to China and then it doesn't matter, right? Because they don't count climate change over there and they'll reduce our emissions having less of you over here. <laughs> This whole thing, too, is just so ridiculous because he wants to do this whole 2030, 2035. And China is reducing their carbon levels by 2060. Why? Why? Why do Canadians have to suffer when they're the biggest polluter? 
This is getting really tired and old. Revenues from carbon pricing that you promised indigenous communities and small business and medium, small and medium businesses that you have not returned. What's your plan with that? Why has, hasn't that money gone back to these people? We're working hard to make sure that this money can be returned as rapidly as possible. Fraser was saying oh, that to get societal change that you want to get with something like the uh, carbon price, you need to make sure people are going with you. You've been talking, the government here has been talking about the carbon rebate since as long as this policy has existed. 2019. People aren't following along with it. Like, is this really going to change anything in the minds of people feeling the affordability pinch right now? I think we can always do better when it comes to communicating on climate change. But as many of us have said in the past, since 2019, when we've put that measure in place, eight out of 10 Canadians, low income to middle income Canadians, get more money back than they pay. That's a fact. Like you go back and you look at the numbers from 2019, push that crap. 2023. They eight out of ten Canadian families get more money back. We can we can always do better when it comes to communicating, and we will certainly be working on that. You've been, you've been saying that for months now. The it's not just conservative premiers and the opposition that are undermining it. You've been saying for months you need to communicate better. Do you have any concrete plan on how you're going to do that instead of just repeating the the same talking points that aren't resonating with people? I think it's a complex issue, and we need to continue communicating on it with, with Canadians. You might have seen that we, we, we put out a, a new climate literacy campaign uh, on traditional media, social media. I was even in the Super Bowl. Um, on, on If you want to know about that story, I think the, I'm the only one on YouTube who covered that. It's about maybe a month ago. The thumbnail is of Gilbo and the Super Bowl trophy thing. They wasted our tax dollars promoting their climate incentive plan during the Super Bowl, like in America. Like, what a waste of our money. Like, unbelievable. We have people sleeping on the streets, and these dingbats are spending our money on stupid Super Bowl ads about climate action. You got to be kidding me. On, on, on climate change and helping Canadians better understand the realities of climate change, communicating on carbon pricing will certainly be an element of that as well going forward. Right now, that's what premiers like Anthony Fear are asking for. They're not asking to get rid of it. They're asking for a pause on the increase this year. What would the harm be in the government's plans if it didn't go to $80 and it stayed at 65 for one more year? Those premiers who talk about the need to pause never talk about the fact that as carbon pricing goes up for families, the rebates also go up. That's a, that, <laughs> Shut that, up. That's a fact. Shut up, Gilbo. Yes, but the cost of climate change are, are also going up. And we can't put climate change on pause. We can't put climate impacts on pause. And if Canada doesn't do its fair share when it comes to fighting climate change, how can I go and talk to China or India or other countries in the world and say, hey, let's work together on finding a solution to climate change? Because there's only one way that we solve this, and it's together. Thank you very much. Yes. This guy's trying to phase out Canadians is what he's trying to do. That's what you put a price on people's lives is what you're doing. This guy is just a disgrace. I don't know which one is the biggest disgrace. Obviously, Trudeau's at the top, but who, who's second? Is it Freeland? Is it this guy? Sean Fraser? There's this, there's a, <laughs> there's too many of them. There's too many. With all that in mind, there's documents that show unidentified VIP booked the $1,822 a night suite at a Dubai climate conference. The whole delegation led by Stephen Gibbo cost $1.3 million, including airfare. You can't make this crap up. He took 633 people on this junket to Dubai. You want to talk about climate? Screw you, man. <laughs> well, how about you? How about you snowshoe to work and and have your 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 junket meetings in in Parliament? You got plenty of boardrooms there. You don't need to go to Dubai. Not on my tax dollars. Not on your tax dollars. Not on all our tax dollars. Yeah, how's that for carbon foot footprint? One million three hundred fifty three thousand three hundred seven dollars. 13 days in Dubai, Gubo billed $13,240 for airfare. What is this, a gold-encrusted plane with gold-encrusted exhaust? <laughs> Jeez. The hypocrisy of this man. This is like dark WEF crap. Like serious Klaus Schwab crap. Finally, we've got a clip here from Kelly Block, also talking to the parliamentary budget officer about this. This government obviously saw the pandemic as an opportunity to shovel money to their friends. We saw this with the multiple ethics breaches by members of this government for giving contracts to liberal insiders and personal friends. And while the government may say 
that all the spending was justified and necessary due to the pandemic, your own office stated that $204.5 billion, roughly 36% in spending from March 2020 to April 2022, was not pandemic related. And despite all this extra spending, or maybe because of all the extra spending, Canadians are worse off. All we need to do is look at the example of the Arrive Can scam and your own observations or concerns in response to a question I asked today regarding the increase in spending versus the performance of the public service. My question to you would be, how will the cost of the increased debt that we have incurred as a result of this wasteful spending affect the government's ability to deliver services moving forward? The simple answer is that it's money that could have been spent on other things or, for example, reducing taxes or spent on other proposals. But that's a highly hypothetical scenario because we don't know exactly what would have happened in the absence of this additional debt servicing costs because that would have meant decisions that would have led us in a different track, obviously. Should the debt carrying costs have an impact on plan spending for the upcoming year? They will undoubtedly have an impact because the moment you have to provide or s use some of your rev more of your revenues towards servicing the debt, it means lower spending on other things other priorities, all other, other things being equal, of course. Unbelievable. We could have been paying lower taxes, but we already know that. I think this will go down in history. Like we look back 20 years as one of the darkest times in Canadian history. When the disgrace of a man, Justin Trudeau, got into power, he weaseled his way in and just ran this country, just rammed it right into oblivion. I'd be really curious just to flash forward and see, like, did they uncover that all of the millions, the billions, sorry, let's use the right <laughs> word here, billions being, uh, you know, shuffled over to Ukraine, you know, did the, like you can't audit that money. So it just, it just disappears into the wind and, you know, are him and Zelensky, you know, embracing poolside, rubbing baby oil on each other and just living life up on their yachts. Like what did they get exposed? Do they, are they in jail? What happens? We'll have to we'll have to play this one out in real time. See what happens, folks. Maybe now is the time to invest in baby oil companies for what? <laughs> Gibo is an absolute criminal in this country. He's already got the mugshot. Put him back in jail. I think at this point we'll probably have to build a new jail, paint it red, suiting for all the liberals that be put behind bars. That does it for this one. Thanks for watching. At the end. If you want to check out my second channel, I've got some uh, new content going up there now. There's lots of stuff happening right now. That's why I got that one going there. Also, I'm incredibly neurotic because I had my YouTube channel of eight years deleted. So a uh, little bit of backup makes me feel nice and it's better for the algorithm, I think, to have less popular content potentially on that channel. So check it out. Thanks for all the super chats coming in. I greatly appreciate it. Stay warm, stay fed. I'll see you guys in the next one.